I'm gonna hit you so hard you won't see nothing ever, 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 ever. Audio scars all day, day, The lyric science is correct. You hear that? That's a deflating balloon because we're about to poop on your party with knowledge and entertainment. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 218. Yes, 218 episodes of this here Mad Scientist Lab podcast. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. As always, it is I, RJ, the pizza guy. Along with Jared, the visual mad scientist, the, there are those famous thumbs and the trigger fingers. Actually, no, let's we'll do this one. It, it, Jared is throwing up gang signs. Hey, that's not a gang sign. This is run the jewels, motherfucker. Run the jewels. Run the jewels. Mm-hmm. You know, see, look at him. Don't know, no, no, don't know hip-hop. He claims to be a fucking former rapper. Don't know any hip-hop. It's all right. Everything is okay. You know who run the jewels is, right? Killer Mike. And who? Uh, fuck. Uh, it escapes me. It does. I forgot his name too. Yeah, it's it's been a little while. D L D J L something. Yeah, I'm 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 hip. I'm I'm a cool guy. I don't know. You were listening to fucking. Although it '90s hip hop is the best. Wait, come on, man. You got broaden your horizons just a little bit. Oh, I know, I know. Don't don't worry. I listen to more. Kid Cudi just came out with an album recently. All right. Uh, don't like it as much as his older stuff. Uh, but Twenty One Savage also came up with an album this uh, past well, last week, I think it was, maybe two weeks ago now. Very good, very good. All right, now, there is your brief hip hop uh, extraordinaire knowledge. Check out Twenty One Savage's new album because if Jared says it's good, it must be all right. Yeah, day and night. That's Kid Cudi. Oh, I got to listen to it again. I was kind of on the move when I was listening to it, so it was. You didn't get to really immerse yourself into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. See, that's what we used to do in high school, man. When like a new album dropped, I mean, we were like stoked for it. I man. still do that. Yeah, um, I, I, I got to be in my car. Well, you know how that is these days, but I got to be in my car, ride around, listen, because the car stereo systems. Well, some of ours. Yeah, well, don't systems. worry. It, it gets around. It moves. <laughs> it goes into drive. You know that's important. But like, if you got a decent sound system in your car, like that's the best place to listen to music. Yeah, because you can hear. More of than what you could hear if you just had like a, I mean, unless you got an expensive home stereo, which, you know what? I don't really think those are things anymore. Th- I was going to say that, but then recently on TikTok, I saw a few of them. Uh, at the name of the company is Macintosh. And I saw them years ago in like uh, Best Buy, but they're really expensive, like acoustic shit. Yeah. Like, like speakers and all that. But they're, they would show people with all these crazy home stereo setups in their house and i'm like bro these are still a thing yeah it's just it costs a lot of money to get the fucking those are real shit those are actually uh the the speakers that are in some of the newer model vehicles that i work with um yeah but that's the bottom grade yeah no no no, no. i i'm a, i know it's probably not near the quality of something that you could put in your house or, mm. or anything of that nature i uh, know but i wouldn't say i i do remember when I was, I would say, maybe five or six, and then we were shopping for a new TV, and we had, I guess it was a Sears catalog or, or something, and I was flipping through it, and my dad was like, find a TV you like, and I found this nice TV, uh, I think it was a 32-inch, you know, this was a tube TV, so, you know, this was back in the day, sat on this nice stand, had the subwoofer in the middle underneath it, it had the two stand-up speakers on the side, with the little boxes on top of them, and it came with this, like, giant stereo stack, dude. And I was like, this is the one yeah, we need to get, Yeah, I mean, get, man. that's still kind of w- like what they are. I mean, I could look one up, but um, when you, I don't know, these are some futuristic-looking shits. Like, it, and they're, 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 the, when they display them, they put them in these contemporary-looking homes. Yeah. The, all the speakers look, like, modern. Like, they have these cones, because it's, like, probably uh, computer-engineered to... F- to, for the acoustic sounds to bounce off of the cone in a certain way. And okay. it's like, it's some wild and crazy shit. Like, technology is crazy. I, I, I'm telling you, when I make it, I got to stop saying that if shit in my head. When I make it, there's two things I want first. Not first. I don't want to say first. Two things I want. I want a Porsche, 11, Porsche 911 Turbo. All right. The new one. Uh, the Turbo S, by the way. Um, and then I want a nice stereo system 
in my house, dedicated to like just it's like a, a music room. Like, you know how people have theaters. Yeah, I, still, yeah. I want it like a theater. That's fine. The basement can be a theater. That's that's easy shit. That's cheap. But I want a nice room dedicated to music only. And like it'll be vinyl shit on the walls. It'll be CDs. Just, yeah, just a yeah, no. fucking a room to chill and listen to music and fucking maybe smoke yeah. a couple fucking doobies or yeah, or no, a cigar no. or fucking have some whiskey and just chill with the homies and listen to music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, that's that was kind of what we did in high school, man. Like when a new album dropped or even a like anticipated mixtape. Every, you know, we'd get off after school. We'd make sure we go get our, our blunts, and, and we would smoke up and then pop it into so, whoever's uh, car we were in. Mm. Or if we were down in somebody's basement with their little surround speakers and stuff. And it was like a whole afternoon vibe kind of thing. It's like, all right, the new album comes out. Which track is the best? Yeah. We'd listen to it a couple times, you know. And then so, analyze the motherfucker. Yeah, and then find your favorite line, and, and, and then you'd listen to it again. It's like, oh, that went over my head the first time and but stuff it like that. I, what, what, what I'm saying is not just hip hop. It's like it's just all music. Like, yeah, because no, I've been on this kick lately of like just listening to random shit. Like I, I like during the holidays for some reason I got on Billy Holiday. I yeah, was there you go, rocking Billy Holiday. Um, and then I, I'll hear some, I'll hear songs or samples that are in like newer hip hop songs, and I'll be like, "Fuck, I forgot about this song," and I'll go back and find and listen to it like on YouTube, and it's not the best quality, but or or I'll find it on Amazon on my um uh, my music or whatever. But yeah, like that. Actually, now a lot of these streaming services, you can get the higher quality, um, like uh, audio, the audio, yeah. yeah, and that's what I'm saying. So it'll be you don't even have to have the fucking records on the wall or whatever. It's cool to have the art. Like we were talking about the. Art a couple weeks ago with Tina Turner and yeah and all that shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I do bro, remember. just the front of those like even CD covers like I, now I take t- two thousand hip hop fucking CD covers those were garbage. A lot of people will probably be like, oh, those are good. They're like, no, that was some fucking third grade fucking Photoshop shit. Yeah, no, there was a. Uh, I think some of my favorite artwork was uh, one of my favorites I can remember was uh, actually a little after I graduated, but it's Kanye yes, uh, Kanye yes, Kanye West's... Uh, Kanye Yeezy. Yeezy, um, his graduation album cover um, with the bear and the colors. And the oh, yeah, that artwork. was... That's still... Okay, so I've been listening... I, I always listen to Kanye. For some reason, that gets that one, and then my favorite album to me to this day of his... Is fucking dark twisted fantasy. Yeah, that that's uh that's a really that's kind of a slept on album, dude. It it shouldn't be slept on. That yeah. is the most musical hip hop album ever. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. There's no other like there's you got hip hop, but then you got hip hop that's actually music. If, yeah, if that no, makes no, no, no. I I know what you mean, man. Trust me, I do. Like Dr. Dre, that's. A lot of his, especially like his later stuff, now is is more musical than just straight up the lyrics. Yeah, um, it's more. It's not as simple. Um, yeah, it, I, it, I, it, and if, I'm I'm, I'm kind of generalizing it because a lot of it has gotten better. Production, hip hop production has gotten like like Metro Boomin. It's still got that street grime to it, but that shit is fucking fire. I I, I, t- I know you don't like newer shit, but Metro Boomin is a fucking beast. When it comes to making beats, um, I wouldn't even say it's not even me liking newer shit. I I think a lot of like you're saying right now, a lot of the I I will fuck with a newer beat real heavy. It's like oh this thing is pretty tough, but it's just some of the artists and I just can't oh, yeah. get down with it. Yeah, they, like, I feel like they ruin a good beat sometimes. Oh no, hundred percent. It's just happy day, happy day, whatever they're saying. Yeah, bippity, bippity, um, boop. I want to say shout out to everybody in the in the group chat. What's up, guys? Chat, um, uh, Epic and Londa. Hey, thanks, guys. Londa, he has very good taste in fucking music because he's like Day and Night is a classic. There you go. Man on the Moon. And then uh, he was saying general music in general. And then we were talking about Dark Twitch of Fantasy, all of, the, all of the Lights, which people don't realize that had Kid Cudi and Rihanna on it. Yeah. But they're not even really credited in the fucking credits if you look up the credits. So I think I think Higher might be my favorite song off of that album, dude. Which one was higher? Oh. Uh, can we get much higher? Yeah, thank so you. High. I wanted to hear that one. <laughs> oh, dude, that beat fucking knocks, bro. Bro, dude. all of them. Uh, yeah, the fucking, dude, the dude, one dude, they dude. did the, the fucking video on, the, 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 what was, was the 15, ding, ding. 
That shit was crazy too. Yeah, we were we were kind of spoiled, man. Like we get there's a lot of really good stuff like from you know no, years you just got to be listening. To, you yeah. have to listen to the shit. Like because after that, to me, I think Kanye's those were the, the ones we just named were probably his two best. Yeah, in my opinion, uh, the Pedro one was decent. Um, I I did like um, I did like uh. 808 and Heartbreak. That was one. Yeah, no, that, that was pretty amazing, good, dude. So amazing. Yeah. And people hated on it because he was using auto-tune yeah. and shit. But I'm like, he's trying to. It was just kind of the wave at the time for yeah, people to hate he, on it. He's yeah. trying to push the element a little bit farther. And and now he can't sing for real, for real. Yeah. He tries. But, uh, like, people who used to, people, a lot of people shitted on T-Pain. And they don't realize how talented T-Pain is. Not just that making beats or making music. Also, rapping and fucking singing. And He's like, actually a very good rapper, dude. I know. Yeah, I, yeah, I remember yeah. putting... Bro, I put this fucking video over him because he's, he's on Twitch. He's a hardcore gamer. He, he, he streams all the time. Oh, that's that's awesome. Yeah, uh, it's called uh, Nappyhead Gaming. <laughs> it, that's his... Oh, that's his, dope. It's original. I yeah. like that. I like that. But um, I, put a, I posted a clip a while back. It was probably, I don't know, five, six years ago. It was him. He was sitting at his race simulator and the camera was on him and he just started fucking rapping the song about cars and he was like supras and like if you know anything about cars then you would understand what he was saying and yeah. it, and I put I put on the thing I was like yo y'all may fuck this is a hot take but this man might be better than Eminem <laughs> and a lot of people were like, "No, oh, how dare you!" But I'm like, "But if you don't know what you're listening to, yeah, you you, you don't know the genius behind what he's saying." Yeah, Eminem's good. Not, yeah, not, but I have not heard him put together shit that makes me think. Yeah, no, no, no. no. I I know what you mean. I you know, know, I know exactly what you're saying. You like to you like to be per, uh, what is it thought. Per, Thought-provoking processes while you're listening, because music is something you feel. So it's going to, it's supposed to fuck with your brain and all sorts of things, your emotions, your feelings, your mind, and all that good stuff. Well, that's that's the fun in it, and that's why the, uh, it was so fun doing those you know, those after-school sessions because it would like motivate us. You know, this was long over twenty years ago, um, but we were really behind it, and it was just something that we did very very frequently. I mean, it was like religion for us. So. Uh, we were, that times. was that was the heyday of like hip hop though. Yeah, and uh, so simpler times, man. Really, just rolling around in my buddy's Camry, just smoking one, and it, yeah, it just can't beat times like that, man. And then be annoyed after we smoked, like, oh my god, where are we? Are cops following us? Um, because back in the day, you had to hide in the woods. Now you can just kind of walk around publicly, and nobody cares. Um, yeah, see, that's how I feel, Alonda. Uh He said Eminem has great wordplay, but it's something I wouldn't listen to only and not. All the time. No, I can agree with that, dude. Yeah. I 100 percent agree with that. But, I, lo- I love Eminem. But he's, I do. I, I'm not saying. I'm not. Look, I'm, I'm not, not saying, saying that he's a, he's a, he's a bad artist. I'm not saying any of that. What I will say, and I think I've said it on here before, I think that too many people put him on a pedestal that he he may he he's not higher than some people. If I'm, I don't know if I'm even trying. If I'm, he's not the best. And that's what a lot of people are are trying to say that he's the the goat. Yeah, I mean, no, he's I, he's a goat. Yeah, I put Buster Rhymes above him. Uh, I would say both of those guys are probably in my top ten. No, well, no shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I would tell you, I mean, it was lower on my top ten than a lot of people would put him. Yeah, no, I w- ooh man, it's hard, man. I know, um, I know, it's, it's the it's whiteness. Always- no, it's not even that. Uh, not, I'm not talking about, uh, yes, very, very white, very white indeed. Um, no, it's because everybody has their favorites and everybody's numbers. They're going to have some bias or some reason they're leaning towards something. My favorite still is always going to be Biggie, uh, Biggie or Nas, uh, one of those two. Mm, yeah. Um, and then after that, I don't really have a specific order I put anybody in. That's but no, I can yeah, I can you name probably, ten because you probably like them for different reasons. Yeah, exactly. And so for that's me a, to that's the same thing with comedy. I I think is art is art. Like everybody's gonna take their interpretation of it and twist it. Not twist it. I don't want to say twist because like if I look at a painting or like this, it's perception. For instance, 
like I look at it and see a certain thing like that somebody else may not see because I may have a connection to the the show. I may emotionally like like the character itself. Yeah. And and because of that I like everything that's represented in the picture. Yeah. If that makes sense. Still such a lovely picture we got. To have. I, I don't know if everybody can see it. I, I, maybe I'll take a picture and post it so everybody can see it one day. Um, but anyway, like so. That, so if you go to an art museum and you look at a wall, and you, like in movies, you'll see people. Like, what so? What does this speak to you? Like, what is it? Yeah, it's true. It everything says something different when yeah. it comes to creativity to up to people. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. So if I I couldn't really put artists or even maybe even albums um like i can name my 10 favorite but putting them in an order is just very difficult like in a, because you're right i like them all for different reasons who the fuck is stevie nicks stevie nicks from fleetwood mac oh I am, i'm sorry i don't know who that is yeah no fleetwood mac dude. that's what epic said he said all these people are great but no one beats stevie nicks i mean <laughs> see londa said never heard of stevie nicks oh well i'm sure londa's heard of fleetwood mac uh, i've heard of fleetwood mac yeah, but yeah. I, w- I couldn't tell you a song Oh yeah, there's a lot. There's the. I'm, I'm sure. Mm. Are they the ones with the girl? Yeah, the the chick singing, and then she oh. used to date the drummer, and then like pretty much all the songs are about. Well, dating that also. Head. Well, no, I was thinking about no doubt, but that was the dr- the drummer. Um, she dated the 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 bass guitars. Come on, man! You don't like Gold Dust Woman? I love Gold Dust Woman. That's my like. Mm. That's my shit. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying. Maybe. I've I've heard them on the radio. I'm not. I'm not going to say I'm rushing out to buy a, a CD or fucking No, it's definitely something you kind of got to be in the mood to listen to. Uh but but they do uh they do make good uh, good tunes. So I I'm definitely a fan. Um no. Ah man, but uh, creativity as a whole is I think uh what makes obviously it so special is because it makes people feel in different things like like again, we can just reference the painting. Mm-hmm. It's like mm I feel a certain way about it. You feel a certain way about it. And that's what creates conversation. And that's what leads to more creativity. It's yeah. like, uh, it's By like the a way, cycle. I need you, since, since it doesn't work for me, I need you to hit this person up yeah, and see if you can get them to fucking come over here. I will. I, Especially because they're about to go away for a while. And I think. I think it would now be, would be a good time to do yeah. time to do this. Yeah. yeah. So I, you have my word this evening. I will, I will. Make that, uh, I will throw up the bat signal for okay. us. The, or the rat signal. Because I haven't even seen <laughs> I haven't even seen him in a while. Um, Going to look into it. Look into it. You sound like Johnny Bravo. Not Johnny Bravo. Eddie Bravo. Eddie Bravo? Yeah. Well, I was a fan of Johnny Bravo. I mean, who no, was Eddie it? Bravo was a uh, jiu-jitsu guy. Pretty famous jiu-jitsu guy. Yeah, you ever pretty- heard of 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu? No, oh, but no, I, no. I do know the name Eddie Bravo, though. Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. I do know that name. Yeah, yeah. He's he's the one that's always on Joe Rogan, and he's like, "Look into it. Yeah. You can you can find all this stuff on YouTube." Bro. And that's uh, more than likely that's where I know him from. So. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, I, if I know, I don't. I, I don't have the. You know, I have a pic- or, I have a picture with him. I post. I reposted it the other day on Facebook. Oh yeah, I did see that, dude. Yeah. It was like when you were younger, right? I mean, well, I mean, hold on. Obviously. I, I, yeah, hold on. I, I'm not trying to make it was like old. 2013. I yeah, I, d- I do remember. You had like the Redskins gear on. Yeah, because that was, that was the weekend when RG3 was here. That was the weekend that they uh, were playing Seattle for uh, the playoffs. Oh, and then when his knee blew out and then just everything. Well, it was that same year. Oh, man, dude. What up? Just, oh, that's I Because I was, I remember I was in Orlando. Matter of fact, I had gone to the, um, to the NFL, the NFL, the fucking Monday night football game where they had to beat the Giants to get into the playoffs. Yeah. And then, like, whatever week that – what the next week or whatever that was, I was in Orlando for work, and that was – it was for a MMA uh, ownership thing, like making your schools better and shit. But Eddie Bravo was there. Joe Lozon was there. Uh, a bunch of – uh, legendary jujitsu people. Um, I'm trying to think of who else. I had a. There was a bunch of people, like famous people. Dean Thomas was there. If you know anything about MMA, you know who he is. I've I've heard his name before too. Yeah, he, I've definitely he's one of the name. announcers. He's been around. He's been a coach. Um, a few people. Were, I'm trying to think of who else was there. Well, anyway, there was a bunch of people there. That's dope, though. I mean, man, what a. That that feels like so long ago, or no, nah, it doesn't even feel that long ago, honestly. What what are these acronyms, Londa? What is DDP? 
DDP, Diamond Dallas Page, baby. I don't think that's what he means. Self high five. said Jared DDP, now the middleweight champion. Uh, oh, um, not Diamond Dallas Page. Uh, <laughs> I know. Fuck. I just watched it last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I you I am not gonna say that that name. Um Dupuis, I think his name is. Yeah, he's South African. Um uh, he won well, I say South African. Let me just keep it right there. Yeah. A South African. <laughs> okay, okay. I mean I'm I'm where I'm learning this who is, is all new to me. Who is now the middleweight champion. Um I'll be honest with you, Londa. I'm not a fan of Strickland. I'm kinda glad he's not the champion anymore. But that gives also um uh fucking guy's name. I, I can't remember anybody's name to that's how you know I've been away for a minute. It's all right, man. No <clears throat> um Stylebender. What the fuck is his name? Stylebender. You I know mean, his name. Well, yeah, you're I uh, mean oh, John Jones? No, Stylebender. Bender. John Jones, Jones is Bones. Bones, Bones. Stylebender. And you know what I do know his name. Uh, um I know Silva's. Oh a yeah, Adesanya. Yeah, Israel I, Adesanya. Okay, okay. Yes. I Sorry, my bad. Name. He fucking. Okay, I don't need the capital letters. Okay, I get it. Yeah. Hey, we're we're trying here. We're trying. It's our first live show, and and your favorite. Weeks. Oh, here we go. Is is a dad joke, uh, by Epic. And your favorite soda to, what? And your oh, and your huh? So your favorite soda to, and beer for fifty cent is a deal at the night bar. What? I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what it means either, if I to be honest with you. Pull you. See if you can understand. Well, here, let me pull, uh, let me get that, I think at that time. Oops, I accidentally snapshotted a screenshot of my background, which is just SpongeBob, by the way, if anybody was just curious. Hold on, let me pull that up. Let's get that mad scientist lab chat. Allow. Let's see. Allow? What the fuck? I don't know. Something. That, ooh, there we go. Let me see if I can. Read uh, it. I might not show it because you didn't have it open. Uh, I see it. Hello. Volume. Oh, oh, there we go. Let's oh, see. Type. Just fucking say. Read. It, well, it's, it's not that, there. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. No, I was. It was still on the little corner piece. So. All right. Moving on. Uh, moving on. Moving on. Uh, it's all right. So you know what I did, Jared? Well. You know, while you were on your ex- escapade. Um, oh, you mean working? Yeah, well, I mean, it's working and where you were at is probably more pleasant than the weather we were Oh, fuck yeah, here. 100%. It was fucking... Okay, hold on, hold on. Let's try it again. Add your favorite beer to any beer for 50 cents is the deal at the bar tonight. Oh, you're at a bar. See, context, my friend. Context helps. Okay. So, hey, let me ask you, Epic, since you're at a bar and you're watching us, are we currently on the screens no. there at the bar? No. Dude, he told me the other night he had my stream up at the bar for like 11 people. Watch me Can play. they hear us? Yeah, I think so. Well, uh, shit. Well, shout out to y'all. Yeah, if, if we are being streamed live currently in the bar that Epic is sitting in. Hello, hello. Wisconsin Indians. We're going we're gonna to start charging by, by the, uh, the television that it's on. By yeah, the way. and by the seats. By the seats, <laughs> all right? And we got to make that cheddar. Um, Shout anyway. out to the bar. Hey, make sure you tip your bartenders and your servers. It's very important. We know Epic does. Epic probably bought him a boat for all we know. <laughs> just saying. Just saying. And it wouldn't surprise me, and that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. But uh, while you were away, Jared, I, um, I dove into some what I felt like a bit of nostalgic 80s for a couple of days. Dove into some 80s gaming. Um, if that makes any sense. And I don't mean like a retro game or anything like that. I'm not talking about Pac-Man or Pong or any th- Space Invaders. Um, what I'm talking about is in the in the duration that you were gone, I played two games that are big, big movie franchises uh, from the 80s, one being RoboCop Rogue City and then the other being Terminator Resistance. Um, and I got to tell you this. Mm-hmm. Um the RoboCop game was made by a, I guess, a smaller studio, but they tried to make it like a big AAA title. And when I was initially downloading Uh-oh. it... That doesn't sound promising. No, it, it, it doesn't initially. Uh, but w- uh, By I, I the will, way you're describing it. This game is a hell of a lot of fun, dude. And I, it, oh, I knew it was. I've seen it. And it just... It nailed the source material to a T. I really felt like I was in old Detroit... 
I really felt like a giant walking ton of steel and tin. Hold on, wait a minute. Wouldn't it technically be New Detroit? Well, they're trying. Well, it's Old Detroit. They're trying to build New Detroit on top of Old Detroit, or they're. Uh, yeah, but this is well, RoboCop is in the future. Yeah, I know. And then an Omnicore. Well, Omnicore is basically trying to tear down New Detroit to put something up, or Old Detroit to put up New Detroit in some other suburb, because the storyline is original. Peter Weller. Uh, reprises his voice as RoboCop, as Murphy, Alex Murphy. And it takes place between the second and third films, uh, which are obviously, you know, Wait, those By the movies. way, hold on real quick. Uh, by the way, if you are on Twitch and you are watching, you can go ahead and purchase your merch if you enjoy the show or hit the like and follow button and all that stuff. Yeah, you want to show off to your friends how cool you are? Purchase your Mad Scientist Lab gear right. right there on the link. Right, uh, I'm just saying. Don't, I, make, it, don't I, make it cheesy. I, it, I know. It's just kind of how I am. But it, it really captured... <laughs> that shit was loud. <laughs> <laughs> it really captured the feel and... I just had a lot of fun with it. You can, um, I would say the game overall is maybe about 10 to 12 hours long uh, on a normal playthrough. And you can level up your, your class uh, or your, your stats, like your armor, your your combat, uh, your psychology. Because the really cool thing about this game is you get a lot of character background from all the side characters. Mm -hmm. And it like just rolls into the story. And... I just had a lot of fun with it. What was the uh, the female cop that was with him? What was her name? Her, Not, was that Mur That wasn't Murphy, right? No, no, no. Her name is Anne. What was her? What was her? It's a oh fuck! Oh, I, 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 I fucking I, up. I was playing. I'm looking it up. Hold on. It's bothered me because I played it for a good several days. I gotta take it off so I can use the fucking thing. Uh, let me just do this real fast. Hold on. And it's oh man, I'm so upset. Oh, three pretty bartender ladies. Oh, hey, 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 ladies. Hey, I'm, ladies. I'll be coming to Wisconsin yeah, so soon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hi. We're really cool people. Uh, what I was going to say is it's Ann Lewis. Her name is Ann oh, Lewis. 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 Yeah, there yeah, you go. That doesn't sound, that was a shitty fucking name. Yeah, but at the same time, they incorporate all the characters. I mean, they got the police station down to a T, and it just represents the source material a lot. And I just had a lot of fun with it. I highly encourage anybody, it's on Xbox, PlayStation, Steam, to check it out. Uh, and what they did this past week, and I haven't done it yet, the developers, um, as a treat to fans, added a New Game Plus mode to where you can take your current RoboCop stats into a new game. You get a new pistol skin for your, you know, infinite pistol. Um, I just had a lot of fun with it. Uh, so I highly encourage everybody to check it out. And I just had that whole splash of 80s. I ended up watching RoboCop after playing it just to because I was like, oh, man, I'm in the mood. It's got me all hyped and everything. And I can't I, I remember why the first film was so graphic, dude. It is a very graphic. It is a graphic. Actually, you know, the funny part, um, I don't want to say funny. It's not funny. It's more ironic than anything. I was talking about uh, somehow RoboCop came up with my coworkers and we were talking about it. And I think we were just talking about sh like movies that kind of traumatize us as kids. Yeah. And. I d immediately remembered RoboCop, and I was like, "That it didn't really traumatize me because it was part of the times." Yeah, but that movie was graphic as fuck. It's a bro. very graphic movie, dude. Like that uh, shit where the dude gets the acid dumped on him. Yeah, and then he gets and, splattered. And then he's by walking the around, and he gets hit by the car, splats on the fucking windshield, and then they take the fucking windshield uh, wipers yeah. and wipers. It. It's like, Ugh. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> and just the the initial scene where Murphy just gets blown to shit. I mean, they show everything, man. I mean. It's. I think initially when that movie came out, it was rated X. If uh, um, I do recall something about that, uh, but um, but still, uh, it was. It's just got a really neat little story that takes place between the second and third films. Uh, so again, highly highly recommended. I did not think I was going to like it as much as I did. I thought. I, 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 first of all, I told you because I had seen people streaming it, and um, I, I was going to get to it eventually because I do want to play it. Yeah, um, I, I watched you a little bit, and I again I tried to. Uh, chat in your chat and then didn't get any response but either way um and then i also saw you playing uh terminator resistance which i thought was more interesting because i felt like you were like in the times during the the fucking terminator yes and no and so like the, <laughs> that shit was crazy so it does take place in the future in los angeles after judgment day and so it the game serves as a mini side story prequel uh before the original film 
And it kind of ties into when Kyle Reese gets sent back to uh, protect Sarah Connor from the original Terminator. Um, and there's a nice little Robert Patrick cameo um, in the game where he's just kind of laying on a table, uh, like some autopsy table kind of thing. But you're right. That game really captured the atmosphere. Um, the story, again, uh, about Skynet and how John Connor is trying to basically prevent Judgment Day from happening is all wrapped into one. And that game, more so than RoboCop, is actually more of a survival game at the end of the day because, reason being, you have to salvage your ammo, uh, your supplies, your heals. And so every, I guess, scenario where you can engage in combat, you don't want to uh, just simply because you might not have the resources to take out some of the different styles of Terminators. They've got the little spider ones. They've got, uh, obviously, the famous T-800s from the movies. Um, and then you get some of their, you know, their more upgraded weapons as the game progresses. And that was a lot of fun, too. So I just kind of had this huge rush of 80s nostalgia while you were, you know, away for, for work. And I just couldn't recommend that game enough either because the complete edition comes with this um, this mode where it actually allows you to play as a Terminator. You get the whole red Terminator vision. Um, you're basically invincible. You can heal yourself. It's it's a lot of fun. You get to scan stuff like... Um, yeah, yeah. You like, can, a, like RoboCop, you could scan... Yeah, so you can scan them. And the cool thing about the scanner is it's just like in the movie when Arnold's scanning their pants. It just highlights their pants, like different portions of the mm -hmm. body. So, so, so really, really just very small things. That, the little details... I need just your it. shoes, your shirt, and your motorcycle. Yeah, and then, and then he's like, fuck you. And then he just, like, <laughs> stabs him in the shoulder with a thing and then throws him on the stove. Classic that. movie. That was one of the movies that came up that was traumatizing as well. Because that was kind of a violent movie. The first one? That was kind of scary. It, it, yeah, the first movie is a lot, I think, a lot darker. A lot than, darker. Uh, because I mean, the it, second one's pretty dark. Yeah, but I think the atmosphere, because I think the second movie, you they kind of moved around a little bit. In terms, I felt like a lot of the uh, the first movie just took kind of place in the city <laughs> and in the in the police station. In, in the second film, you know, they're in the uh, they're out in the desert at one point. You know, they're they're at the steel mill. Um, you know, they're at the the headquarters for Skynet oh, and all that. When they fucking at the end, when the body, the half of fucking skeleton metal, it's a robot, but it looks like half of a fucking skeleton body. Yeah, is creeping like it is like stop motion, like old school stop motion. Yeah, yeah, because that was when it looks dated. Yeah, yeah, like when effects weren't quite quite there, but they were still good enough to be like the old school scary shit. Yeah, at, at the same time, so that that made it look really fucking creepy. And then they crush him up, or then his eyes just like slowly dims out. Like that, that so was crazy. The movie. one part that my dad actually had a hard time with me watching as a kid that he'd always uh, tell me to kind of like, eh, I don't know if you want to see that, is where uh, T one thousand is in the, I guess the psych facility, um, trying to get Sarah Connor, and the the, the cop goes second up, or first. Th one? This is the second one I'm talking okay, about. Okay, okay. Um, in this, the the cop goes to get the coffee. And he looks up and he's like, "Hey, I won!" And then he turns, <laughs> and then he shoves the the pick in his eye. Yeah, that and was it actually, a, yeah. And it, my dad, you know, that was kind of hard to watch. That as a was kid. a rough part too. E yeah. Even for me, that was a rough yeah. Part. So that uh, yeah, those are you know those movies got away with a lot in terms of graphics and gore. We need more of those though. Let me ask you: There was a movie I was reading about. I cannot remember the title of it to R save my life. Don't let me forget this. Uh, Criminal geniuses. I need to let me. Don't let me forget this one. Oh, and then you texted me something to not yeah, yeah. Forget but as well. finish what you were saying. Um, no, but there's a movie apparently that came out. Uh, this was like a long time ago, like in the early 2000s. Um, it's got like William Defoe in it and something. It, I don't know. It basically reenacts like a real sex scene, and it's got somebody losing their. Apparently, this movie traumatized a lot of people. I'm trying to think of the name of it, but it was so like it's like one of those films that's just so fucking out there, you're like, what am I watching kind of thing. What does that have to do with what we're saying? Oh, I'm just talking about, like, how films are made nowadays, because this was an older movie as, as oh, well. I don't know um, Because about. I feel like the boundaries are, are pushed nowadays, but they're pushed, like, more sexually, if that makes any sense. Well, yeah, because there's that whole, there's a whole time where it was, like, uh, sex sells type shit. So, uh, I don't know. It, I see what you're saying, but I don't know. There's just no originality in in shit anymore anything well anything 
that is original won't get seen by the people who can make it happen. Yeah. Because it all they all they care about is the bottom line. So that's why they go with the safer, especially the big studios. They got, they're going to go with the the Marvel movies. They're going to go with fucking reframing fucking Terminator or Roadhouse yeah. with a big name director, but the, then it's not coming out in theaters now. That's and the, the the director, which he was the director of a couple big movies, and I can now I can't remember what they are. But anyway, he's boycotting the opening of it at um, Sundance or whatever the the big shit, the big film festival that's coming up. He's boycotting it because they promised him that it was going to be in theaters. Now it's just going to be on Amazon. Oh, yeah. Well, it uh, looks good. It looks yeah. good. I don't know if I. Bro, first of all, Roadhouse doesn't need to be redone. No, Sorry. yeah, that no. that movie stands up by itself to this day. Yeah, I know it's fucking badass. Yeah, so I don't know why they're doing that. But anyway, it it well, why they did that. It's, it looks cool. I've seen some. I've seen the trailer. I'll I'll probably watch it since it's gonna be on streaming services on on my one that I use a lot anyway. But I'm not gonna go out and fucking make sure everybody goes to see it. Yeah, what I was gonna say since we're on the subject of like action heroes and like games and stuff like that. So in this wave of nostalgia that I was having while you were gone. I was just uh, scrolling through some YouTube videos one night, and I watched this guy for, he made maybe like a 45-minute video, where he reviewed and played older PlayStation games from the PS1, and I know you're a big, uh, you know, so, uh, PlayStation guy. Uh, did you ever play the Die Hard trilogy games? For of course the, not. Um, <laughs> so... I ended up watching him review the this uh, catalog of every Die Hard game that's ever been made, right? And in just like it was just kind of showing the progression of gaming as a whole. And obviously, the last Die Hard game that came out was like in the early two thousands, I believe it was called like Die Hard Vendetta or something of that nature. But he was going through the original PlayStation game, which kind of has all three films in it. Yeah, Londa, I didn't know either. Uh, in terms of there's a Die Hard game. There is a Die Hard game. There there are f- a few Die Hard games. Never heard uh, of them. So the basically the the trilogy uh, on the original PlayStation. The first game obviously it takes place at Nakatomi Towers. Okay, and well, we don't need the the full, I don't think we need the full spiel on the entire uh, system. Yeah, no, no, no. But I just thought it was really it was just interesting because I never played them um, as a kid. Yep. Um, and it was just cool to see that and just see how far games have come along and just oh, the, you can the, do the that with hero. any game. Well, I know, but just like the action heroes since I was playing Terminator and Robocop. I mean, oh. John McClane is kind of up there oh, for I see me. What you're saying. Yeah, I was just kind of correlating with, with that stuff. But they looked. Um, you're correlating with your own little world that no one else was a part of. Leave me alone, Jared. <laughs> Please. Um, but that leads me to. I, I thought about you. I finished up uh, Terminator. I was like, you know what I need to do? I said, I need to get on it. I said, I need to buckle down. I need to fasten my shoe buckles. I need to put my cotton swab in my musket. And I need to... The fuck are you doing? Using my snake oil or my gun oil to clean my repeater. Folks, <sighs> I have been back in full effect. Red Dead Redemption 2 Online. Playing... Woo! Yay, I know. I, I, I watch this. I get it. I don't care about this shit, though, dude. So I am a moonshiner, <laughs> okay? I am a Oh, is that your, that's your job? Yeah, so so I, so I there are various roles, uh, not, and, and and this is completely separate from the, the RP, the role-playing that Jared is, you know, normally discusses. But within Red Dead Online, there are five roles. You have your bounty hunter, your naturalist, your survivalist, um, your moonshiner, and your collector, Okay. Each one has 20 levels, and as you progress through said, you know, levels, you get things, uh, you know, rewards for that category. So I have decided that I have to finally, after many years, knock out this online achievement for attaining a certain rank. And I said, what better way to do it than Bruce and Moonshine? So that's your Virginia roots coming out in front of you, boy. So I basically am brewing Moonshine. I am delivering it. I am getting role experience. I am getting overall experience, and I am getting cooler shit for my character. So, if you guys want to check me out here in the next couple days, oh, um, forever underscore dope at Twitch TV. Um, you at can Twitch check me dot TV. Twitch dot. You know, 
you know, the thing we're streaming on live. Yeah, where we are right now. Yeah, every Saturday around 6 p.m. ish, live on Twitch. Uh, but I've been having a lot of fun with it. I want I, I want to say something real quick. Londa has never played a Red Dead Redemption game at Ooh, all. So man. he gets this. Emotional damage. You you got to do yourself a favor, man. In all seriousness, you got to play those video games. Uh, they they are they are experiences. That's what I'm going to call them. Uh, from now on, when there is a game that just completely wows me, I'm just going to refer to it as an experience. Um, Red Dead Redemption 2 is an experience. Um, oh, for sure. 2 is fucking crazy. And it, it's so funny. It's the little details in the game. You never, for- you, you never stop seeing new shit. You never stop seeing new shit. No. That, I, that game is insane. I I was streaming the other night. I was uh, in between missions. You know, I'm trying to collect some gold and all this stuff to build up my, my, my bar and my moonshine so I can produce better stuff. And my horse starts just randomly shitting as you're, I'm just... You're, I'm sorry, your what? My horse. I, I, oh, your horse. I thought you said your warts. I'm like, uh, you need to get that checked out. Yeah, if I did, um, I probably wouldn't share it publicly. Or uh, <laughs> uh, maybe you would. Who knows? Who knows? You never know what I'm going to say. Um, but... But my horse, it was just like, and I was like, what was that? And then it's just like shit flying out of its ass, and it's just dropping on the street. Oh, yeah. And some guy's walking by. He was like, can you watch it, buddy? Like, And I was just <laughs> like, I was like, it's the little things, right? Yeah. Have you tried to point your, your gun at um at any any like NPCs or anything? Oh, oh yeah. And then they're like, hey, what the fuck? Yeah. yeah. Oh, dude, I was. They'll fucking kill you. So there was, a, there was a time, like a good hour the other day when I was playing, and it was a little darker outside, so and it had like a little bit of haze, so I I couldn't really see what was in front of me, dude. On two separate occasions, I like plowed into another horse completely, flipped up into the air. Okay, phrasing. I I'm not plowing horses. He plowed into another horse, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, with, with came my, out of his mouth with my horse. I plowed into another. That sounds even worse. It, there's a law against that somewhere. It, it, it probably is. It, there, it, there probably should be, If now that I think about it. But it's the little details. It was like the, the rain, uh, little rain puddles in the mud, um, splashed under my horse's feet uh, or hooves, I Bro. should say. <laughs> What's going on with your mouth today? What, what do you mean? I'm going on my horse. Or something. I don't know. I haven't had a drink in a long time. That's, that should make your fucking brain and your mouth work better in sequence. It, it, it is in sequence. No, but I just I've had a lot of fun with it, and the moonshiner roll is really cool. And I'm going to be doing the bounty hunter roll next because it's like the most action packed one. Um, and you get some really cool skins. I get some weapon upgrades. Uh, so I am like back in full force. Excuse with me, sir. Red Dead Online. I got you. I understand. All right. I'm glad you are. About time. Come on over to the role play servers when you're ready. You want to fucking do some real shit? Yeah. No. No. Um. I want to talk about a little something. All right. And I'm, I'm, I'm down. Well, there's two things I want to talk about. Don't let me forget about. You know what? I'll start with this one first. I just want to say, I want to pat myself on the back for getting on stage at one of the greatest comedy clubs in comedy history. This is, it's not the actual one in LA because I was in San Diego. But it's, it was owned. It's owned by the same people. I got to do some time at the comedy store in La Jolla. Oh, that's awesome, dude! And if you know anything about stand-up comedy, the comedy store is where all the greats came through: fucking Richard Pryor, Dave Chappelle, Jeff Ross. You name them, Robin Williams. You name them. They've all been on that stage. Any level of funny has passed through those doors. Any. Well, I don't want to say any level, but, like, the greatest of all yeah. comedians have gone through there. And I don't have my name on that wall. Hopefully one day I will. But I, I took a picture on the outside because we, we couldn't, can't record inside. Yeah. And you can't, you're technically supposed to turn your phone off. Um, But I, and I just happened to get all the great names, like Chappelle's on there, like, like right above the sign. I don't know if you saw the picture. Um, I don't think I have, actually, now that I think about it. I, I'll, I'll post it in here, but, it's like, the comedy store signs there, and then Ch- Chappelle's name is, like, right above my head. Then, like, Bill Burr's kind of, like, over here, and Joey Diaz, and, like, a, a whole bunch of people. And I didn't even realize it when I took the picture until I looked back at it. I was like, oh, shit. You got I, all their I, names. I got all the fucking. Oh, that's sweet, dude. 
So let me ask you, since you were in uh, a very, a very, I tried to hit a, as many clubs as I could, but the way my schedule was working and the way the, the open mics work and all that shit, but yeah, go ahead. Being in a, I guess, uh, uh, in a historic place, I would think that's a, a, a at some point in time going to be some sort of national, well, I wouldn't say a national landmark, but some sort of, uh, it is. If you know, if you're into comedy, you yeah. know what it is. So uh, is, is it tougher in a place like that? Um, as opposed to some of the other play, because I know down in Texas you went uh, down to the Kill Tony. Yeah, um, I didn't get on Kill Tony. Oh, yeah, no, no, but or audition for it and all that stuff. No, all I did was sign up. Sign like, up. The re- the way you get on Kill Tony is you get picked out of a bucket. Like you go you go down there, you put you sign up that you got to sign a fucking release form, um, and then they put your name in the bucket and hopefully you get called if you get called. While you're waiting, there's a bunch of other comedians waiting also to get there. So if you get p- picked out of the bucket, they, then you go on stage, you do your minute. Hopefully that goes well. Then you do your interview. And hopefully that goes well. And hopefully opportunities pop up from that. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Was this any, did you treat this any differently um, as opposed to some of the other venues you've been at? Um, No. I, I don't when you say by say by saying differently, what do you mean? Like, I don't know. I just I, just because of how uh, prestigious this place is, did you go in and thinking like, yeah, like did you I, did I, you feel the vibe more so like mm, uh, than anywhere else or because I'm sure you were like soaking it in. Yes and no. Um, I wanted no matter where I go. Let's put it this way: no matter where I go these days, I want to make sure I'm putting on. I'm trying to be the most undeniable person there. Like I want my jokes to be the strongest and I want to fucking, I want the crowd to do like what they came there to do is to laugh. Yeah. So I don't think that I, it, the venue at this point really matters. It's just whether my material is good enough to get the job done. Yeah. So that's where I'm at it with these days. I, I, I I, to be honest, I don't really care. It, man, I'm, I'm still going to be nervous. Like, I was nervous, of course. Yeah. Like, even if I get on Kill Tony, because I'm going down there um, this week. Mm-hmm. Um, if I get on, I'm going to be fucking nervous as shit, because that's the shot of a, not a lifetime, but first impressions are just like anything else. Yeah, you know yeah, saying? no, they, 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 do, so, they do matter. They do matter. Uh, I'm I'm so glad uh, that's that's one of those things that people tell you when you're younger. You're like, yeah, yeah, no, it, it's true. Dude. First impressions do mean a lot, um, for in any aspect. You also got those free those free chuggle, chuggable beers or whatever you bought. Uh, you got you got that because you're listening to the uh, Mad Scientist Lab, and they appreciate the fact that you're bringing great entertainment to their beautiful establishment. Yeah, it's very beautiful. We can see it from here. One day. Yeah, no, no, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I mean, we, we hear nothing but nice things about it. John, or excuse me, I don't know who that is. Epic. Jesus uh, Christ. I don't know what I'm saying, folks. I am alive. I am some a alpha robot. brain. Yeah, and something. Um, no, that, that's so cool. We're playing on uh, on a bar. That, I mean, I feel famous right now. Relax. I do. We're I not like, there yet. I feel like the evening news. Good yeah, evening, we got folks. a long way to go. Do we? God. <laughs> yeah, bro, you don't even know. It's taking forever. Do you think nobody is ever an overnight sen- sensation? What about Twister and Celebrity Overnight? That's a fucking made-up song. It's a really good song, though. And usually, like, perfect example, Matt Reif. He wasn't an overnight sensation. He yeah. had been doing comedy since, like, 10 years before that. Yeah, I know that. I know. I just, man, it'd, be, it'd just be nice, you know? It would be nice. <laughs> But it won't. You, you'll never get there if you quit, though. Oh, like, like some people we know. We don't. No, no, we don't know quitters. Uh, I know a few quitters, but I try to stay away from. Them. As as coach Mike Tomlin likes to say, there are a few people who are willing. Or wait, I'm going to butcher this, so I'm not going to say it because I'm going to fuck it up. It's basically, basically, say, basically, basically, basically saying. Basicamente. Yeah, that uh, he knows a lot of people who are willing and capable, or or people who are capable but not willing. And mm-hmm. you know, and and all that stuff. There's a, there's a, a ton of people with talent out there, but not enough people willing to put their shit on the line. Yeah, because they're afraid of failure. Like you're gonna fail no matter what you do. Like shit, you're failing your entire life. You from the time you're born, you're failing. 
When you're trying to fucking, when you see your parent walking down the hall and you're trying to figure out how to keep up with them, you're trying to learn how to walk, right? Yeah. What you going to do? Fall flat on your fucking face. You going to sit there and not ever walk or you going to get the fuck up and keep going? It, uh, I, I don't know if Jim Carrey actually said this, but there was like a recent or maybe a recent interview, but there was, he like basically told a story about how his dad, um, you know, had a good job, all this, but got laid off and, but his dad didn't like the job. He was basically saying, Hey, you know, he was doing something that he didn't like and he failed at it. So you might as well do something you do like and, and fail you know, at that. Yeah. So well, I agree. The, that, yeah, that was basically the whole, uh, uh, what is the, the paraphrasing it? That's my thing with comedy right now. Like, um, I, I don't know. I, uh, I don't even know how to say this. I am beginning to see that I'm willing to take this farther than a lot of people are willing to take it. Do you think and, now? Uh, give, yeah, go ahead. Um, and some of these, some of them are just people that maybe I started out with who aren't doing it anymore or, I don't know, just not willing to put in the sweat equity. Um, I don't know. I just, I just realized some shit probably today, actually, because I was asking about something and I was just like, oh, okay, I, uh. I'm in this by myself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but what it is, what it is. I get it, but it's it's a long way to the top. It's lonely even when you get there. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know it. I, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just fucking do, talking do, out of my ass. Do you think that? Do you think that certain things in? Do you think life in general can hold people back though? Sometimes, like not so much their mindset, well, but just their circumstances. I guess. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, and this is why, and now I'm starting to understand, like, my, my, one of my martial arts instructors, he used to say, he's, he used to say everyone has their reasons as opposed to saying excuses. Yeah. Excuses is, it, it's very negative and it, it's kind of, it makes people, I don't know, feel shitty about themselves when you don't your, your intention is not to make them feel shitty yeah you know no, i got you i guess so reasons is a better way to say it which is true because so um trying to think of a good example say i want to do perfect example i want to go to austin to do to not, try to get on some shows and get on kill tony um and have a couple other comedian buddies who want to do the same. Now, circumstances slash reasons will bring them to not be able to do that. So I can't be upset at them because they can't do that. And this is probably kind of growth on my part as yeah. well. Even with this, because I know the early days of this shit, I know I was fucking probably unbearable at times. Yeah. Um. But it's just... I just have to realize, like, not everybody's going to be willing to put the work and the sacrifice in that I am. Or, I should say, or or there's people probably willing to put in more than I'm willing to put in. Yeah. Like, I'm not willing to quit my job and pursue this shit full time. Yeah, no, that's, 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 a, that's a big... Uh... Now, it could pay off bigger, but it also couldn't. I could also, because of how my job is situated, I can take more chances and go places because I can work wherever the fuck I need to. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I can, if if I get fucking pulled on tour for, because the way comedy or way um, show like a road trip would work, I if somebody wanted, like, hey, I want to take you on the road with me to open or whatever. All right, cool, I'm down. As long as they're paying for all the sh- the travel and shit, I'm with it. Um. So I could go because guess what? Those shows are at night. My job is done just like any other job, nine to five. It's just I'm just in a different city because I have the internet. Yeah. So I'm lucky in that way. I don't, and I, I'm, no, I'm not going to say lucky. I carved my road specifically to be able to cut, pull away from the traditional nine to five. Luckily, somehow, some way, I found my way to comedy, which 
this whole shit is it's, it's like it's it was chosen. Even though I started late, it's like it was chosen for me to go on this path. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I, I, I'm a firm believer of uh, thing. I just believe things happen for a reason. Um, yes, you it, can, Epic. Um, and just life finds a way of kind of playing itself out. Even when we are, you know, uh, even when we don't think it's happening, it is. Like, so to speak, it's like, oh, man, I wish I was, like, doing better or this, this, and that. You know, there's so many ways you can kind of uh, dissect this. Uh, but... The, the important thing is is that you are you know that you're getting closer to whatever or you feel it like you can you oh, can no. actually feel it yeah you feel it um and it's it's a very hard feeling to describe too um I, you just kind of know I bet you feel it uh, do you feel it I, I don't this is a serious question well, and when you, when you when you feel it what do you feel it about so it's like uh, say we do like a really really good show. Uh, which we normally do, and we do a lot of really great shows, and we've had our fair share of kind of stinkers sometimes. It's, well, it's funny. The, the ones that we think are going to do good never do good. <laughs> and the ones that we're just like, fuck this shit, it's never going to happen, yeah. and it's blowing up, and it's like, and then we're still stuck where we're at. It's like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. No, but it's like, put it this way. When we had our 200th episode, and we had the big celebration, and just everybody collectively coming together, whether they were here physically or not, or if they even liked it or watched it on YouTube, or if they watched it live. It's like, you know, those moments, those big moments, it's like, hey, you know, we have done a lot. We have come a long way. And it just feels good naturally. It's like, hey, you know what? We are doing a good job. We have a lot well, of, yeah, no. You got to celebrate the the, 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 miles, the the milestones. Like, yes, we have a long way to go. But if we didn't do anything for the two hundred. It's like, what the fuck are we doing it for? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you have to reward yourself because of the fact, bro, again, this goes back to what I, we were saying and even what Sadiq was saying. It was like, bro, I, he was like, I just started doing content. I understand how much it takes to get, for us to pull this shit together week in and week out and to be at that number, that's just crazy, bro. Yeah, so I, I think what I feel... And initially when, especially if, you know, we've you got the booze going and, and you know, you're, you're riding that wave that high, it, it just feels good. And, and it, it's a level of, uh, and we're doing it just cause we like this shit. Yeah. It's just a level of, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Like, I don't want to say comfort, but it's just like, Hey, we know that we're, we're good at this and, and that's it. It's like, we, we have established ourselves as the podcast guys in the area. That's who we are. And yeah. Whether people come over or not or whatever, you know, that it, that's whatever it is. I don't know. It's hard finding guests these days. Um, but I, I just know I, that nobody does it better than us. Uh, not especially, in this area. Yeah. 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 So, and, and I take good pride in that. And you're right. There are weeks where it's like both of us are like, oh, here we go again. Like, what are we going to talk about? You know, this, this, and that. Uh, I don't really feel that. I, I Lately, I feel like I've been looking forward to it um, more than – usual i guess i guess only because i'm just always in that mode because i know if i can't come up with a joke or like i don't know how to ah, it's hard it's, it's hard to explain well i think it comes I, to us I naturally have, i have to create i had and, and this is a good way to create yeah you know what I'm saying? oh absolutely um if i don't then i'm feeling some type of way the entire week like that's what that, that that's when I think the depression shit starts setting in when you can't release whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have an outlet. It's the it's energy. Yeah. It's, it's not even like, like I'm feeling depressed about being sad about myself is I'm feeling depressed because I can't release whatever yeah. energy is inside this inside yeah. of me. You know what I'm saying? No, 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 no. Yeah. It's so it's some wild shit. Any artists out there, they kind of know what we're talking about. Yeah, no, no. If you, It's like if you've had a, let's say you've had a long day at work, your boss is bitching at you, blah, blah, blah. It gets you all worked up and you get home and you're like, man, fuck. You know, and it's like, well, how can I take all this, whatever it is, and make it positive, you know? What? You said you were going to start writing again. I have. I actually have. Uh, just a tad oh, bit. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, just a tad bit. Just a tad bit. Okay. No, well, I think taking a, uh, well, taking a week off of doing a live show, uh, it gives me uh, an additional day to just kind of sit and decompress more so than I normally do. You know, you could just journal out whatever, especially now you have that computer. You could just sit there and fucking... Oh, and I've been having a lot of fun playing around with that just thing. Just type on... Just open a document and fucking just start typing. It don't have to make sense. Just, I mean, 
make it say words and yeah. sentences. But <laughs> I'm going to put colors and letters no, in like, the order they arrive in my mo- brain. This motherfucker uh, orders shit. Yeah, that could work, but yeah. it's like, blah, 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 blah. That, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, like, actually sit there. You know, today at work was kind of a fucking blower. Yeah. I don't want another day like that. Just random shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't even. Ha- and I've gotten jokes out of doing that. Like, I, I was doing that for, like, and I need to get back to it. Like, no, like, like the, maybe an hour a day, I would just type whatever pops in my head and I would just fucking I'm like, oh shit that works with this and that oh. it's all starting to make sense Captain Underpants yeah. what up ghost ships hey what's up ghost ships it's hammer time we gotta come up with like a, a fucking chime for that like uh, let's see hammer time every time ghost ship comes in I oh, know we gotta give him a good one though no it's not for him this oh, is okay. because he's giving you the hammer it's gonna be this <laughs> That actually is a perfect representation of how I felt the moment I was hit with that hammer. <laughs> that 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 and uh, that was definitely a perfect representation of that. Can't believe that happened, but it's all right. It's all right. Created a fond bonding memory. That's I, funny. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna be a joke. Another oh thing God. I wanted uh-huh. to to talk about. Uh, I saw this TikTok this past week, and it was for some reason I've been getting like random like crazy uh, news reports or whatever like, it, it might be old or whatever but it was this one where this guy was dressed like a a, a loomis worker <laughs> okay loomis is the the, the arm guard company like the, they go in and pick up the money from stores and stuff but he was dressed like this and it was it was on the news report and it was saying yeah so this person came in dressed in asked for the money from the from the people and then walked out and they, they were like well if the police are coming uh, or, or uh, the police are looking for this person. If you have any idea who he is, this said another thing. He stole seventy five thousand um, dollars and be nice. drove away in a car in a black car. If you know this person, uh, any information, please come forward. And um, so, like, but in the picture, you couldn't see. You could, like all, he had a hat on. You, he just looked like actually it could have been me to be honest. But, um, but that's all you could see. And he drives off in his black car, and that's the end of the day. They, I don't think they ever found him. But the comments was wild um everybody was like look it, oh, it was like, at the end please call if you have any information <laughs> and everybody in the comments was like i'm not calling yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, I, and i put it in there i was like look i wouldn't call either we need more criminal geniuses like dude, this guy dude what the fuck <laughs> like it's crazy dude there's nothing more there's nothing like a comment section it is the the tiktok comment sections are the best though a, there is nothing uh a good friend of ours recently added me to a Facebook group uh, where it's basically free photoshops, right? I saw that. I was like, why? At first, I was like, why did you add me to this shit? And then I, they started coming through my feed, and I was like, oh, okay, now I get it. <laughs> yeah, so some of them are fucking hilarious, right? But the comments, the oh, comments my are, God, yeah. dude. Uh, people on the internet are fucking hilarious. The, but it's a cesspool. It's bad for your brain. Yeah, well, it depends. I think if it's all in a fair Everybody, uh, again, just like comedy, everybody agrees to this thing that but like, we're here to have fun and to laugh, then it's okay. Because so then at that point, no matter what happens or what it's said, everybody's like, all right, it's just a fucking joke. We're just here for entertainment. That's it. Yeah. Like that group. So, and and uh, we should probably explain it better. So there's this group on Facebook where uh, people will post uh, pictures and they say, um, Remove this thing and put me in a better background. So there's someone that, that knows how to do Photoshop, which I'm one of those people, and I'm going to do some wild shit at some point. Um, they'll take them and put them in these different situations. And then there's inside jokes with, with the couch and yeah, shit. Yeah, oh, like, the couch, <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, my God, bro. There was one. Oh, my God, dude. There was one that had me. It was last week. It had me fucking dying. I was, like, going, trying to go to bed, and I'm fucking doom Fuck, scrolling. We pull like, this shit up. I'm doom scrolling, and there was one, and, I, and it escapes me, dude. But I legit was like laughing out loud, dude, because it was just fucking hilarious. Dude. I might try to put some. Oh, up. I know what it was. It was a white guy, and he was like, "Hey, put me in the hood, right?" <laughs> and, and, and dude, the first Photoshop picture was him with a clan hood on, dude. And, dude, <laughs> and I started fucking dying, bro. And, Hold on, dude, wait, wait. Let me see if I can find it. Oh my god, dude! And it was crazy because it was posted like. 42 minutes from when I first saw it, and that photo of him in the hood already had, like, a thousand likes or laugh emojis on it. 
Oh my god, I was fucking dying, bro. Uh, if he if he pulls it up, no. But some of them on there are really creative. Um, and then some people are just fucking asking for it, dude. I like, might. I, I don't know if I can find it right now. I'm gonna have to see if I can put cl- clip some in for the YouTube. Uh, but uh, I can't think of the n- actual name of the the the, the Facebook group. Not uh, me either. It's something about like Photoshop edits or something. Yeah, it's uh, it's just fucking hilarious, dude. And people just roasting one another. Um, and then some people are using them as thirst traps as well. So you obviously you gotta avoid. Yeah, that. but like I said, it, like everybody agrees has agreed that it's what it is. Um, See, that's when the internet can be a fun place. You know what I mean? Yeah, but then you all like same thing. You'll you'll get the political shit, and then. And I, I I need to stop doing this. I always will see some political shit, and then I want to see. I kind of want to see what the other side is saying, and, and like you know, most of the time, well, especially on TikTok, it'll be mostly everybody agreeing with whoever the thing is. But like on Instagram, niggas don't care. Yeah, like it'll be some political shit, and then everything under is like. You're fucking stupid. How I was like, I was like, bro, I got okay. I need to leave this room immediately. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't ask to come here. I, was, I mean, like, I did, but I didn't want. Yeah, I, <laughs> we don't need your negativity now, sir. It is yeah. not needed. Um, no, but uh, that shit is hilarious, dude. That one had me fucking dying, bro. But the couch is just constantly. Cou- yeah, that's that's just a heavy rotation in there. Yeah, and then the the, the fucking Jesus memes and all that stuff. There's dude. a bunch. Oh my god, it's hilarious. Um, have fun with the internet, folks. Because it will consume you. It will. That's just how it counts. Whatever that means. Um, also, the other thing I wanted to talk about, uh, I saw this on TikTok. Also, this lady was recording her husband, boyfriend, whoever, situationship, however that shit goes these days. Um, and she was like, ladies, have you ever heard this? And he was like, she was like, what's the selective service? And he was like, uh, every... Man, when he turns 18, has to fill out this form and turn it into the post office. And she was like, well, what is it for? I was like, well, was, he was like, it's for the draft. He was like, but I thought there, she was, I, I thought there wasn't a draft. He was like, well, there is a draft. They're just not using it anymore. But every male has to do this. I'm sure you had to do it yep. at some mm-hmm. point. Um I had to do it, obviously, even though I served. And I was still getting the shit after I was in the military. I'm like, uh, fuck off. Yeah, <laughs> you have my I information. I already signed one. Yeah, you yeah, have my know. information, you motherfuckers. Uh, if you wanted to find me, you could. But now they can't get me. Um, but um, so, yeah, that's just that was that whole thing. And then, like, you go into the comments, since we were on comments, you go into the comments and all these ladies are like, oh, I never heard of that. I never heard of that. And then the first thing that popped in my head, was like, you see, you motherfuckers wanted equality, but you don't want to go to war. Yeah. Because you didn't, they didn't even know about this shit. And they ain't never had to fucking think about it. They never, 18th birthday, they go on about their lives. Fucking like, woo. Like, dude, the way people celebrate their birthdays at 18, dude. I was like in a shack in the woods, dude, with my buddies. and like It's, not, that, dog. I, it's <laughs> not even that, man. It's, it's just that it was just, it was, it was just wild to me that. There's a whole half of the population that doesn't know this shit exists. Well, I, but I, but we're expected to fucking, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not going to get on my soapbox. We got probably potential ladies watching. And I'm not going <laughs> to. Yeah, no, 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 no. But it, it it's just like one of those things where. Um, hold on, I'm having a brain fart. Hold on, hold on. I got it. I got it. I mean, it's not the first one of the show, so. Nah, well, I, think, I think everybody's used to it at this point, RJ. I, I'm I'm trying. I'm trying my best. <laughs> No. Alpha brain, buddy. Alpha brain. It's, uh, brain yeah, but everything is, like, taught differently now, and people are raised differently. And, and like, I, I would say, like, would you call, let me ask you this, since you, ser- you know, served and everything. Mm-hmm. Would you call, um, you know, doing, the, you know, filling out the draft form and everything, would you call that, like, how, what would you call that? It, would you call it, like, an honor? Would you call it, like, a privilege? Would you call it a responsibility? Uh, like a, would you call it a tradition? Um, to well, it, for not really a tradition per se. Um, but what I'm saying is, is the value of what we did when we were 18, signing that, and everybody who's done it, and all that stuff. Do you think that's kind of just gotten lost with the times and how everything is? Uh, no, because people are still doing it. Kids, kids are still doing. They still have to do it. Yeah, I know, I know. But it's since it's not really. 
I just feel like obviously fifty years ago it was more of a or yeah, you know, obviously, back, yeah, obviously, I get it, but that's the thing, and this is what this is what I was saying. This is what potentially the government kind of relies on. They rely on the fact that people just do this because oh, we're supposed to. This is why I always tell you we shouldn't always just fucking do things because of tradition, like, because that tradition could get you fucked up later on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't know how. But, oh, we're just doing it because uh, tradition tells us or or we're just supposed to do this. But at the same time, guess what? We think there ain't no draft, but if World War Three pops off with, I don't know, we're kind of close to it right now. Yeah. If you look at the history and how the other war started, we're pretty fucking close. That's all I'm saying. Um and there's other countries already talking about bringing the draft back. The UK, one of them. Uh, there's one other one. I don't know about here, but either way, uh, guess what, motherfuckers? You already signed up. The day you turned 18, you're signed up for the draft. So what you going to do then? When World War Three pops off and you think you're going to fucking be righteous because I'm, and I'm not being fucking fucked up toward anybody. I'm just saying. Because you don't want to be called a certain pronoun. You think you're not going to that motherfucker? You're going. Cause, or you're not. <laughs> or yeah. you're going to jail. You, yeah. you, you're going to jail, you're going home. Yeah. No. And you're home, by, I mean war. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's as simple as that. Because it if it comes to that point, it's that desperate where they're going to. Ha- there's no choice. You have no choice. Um, our thing here, I think, though. It's not so much the draft being a problem. It's the military is having a hard time bringing people in. Nobody wants to join anymore. Yeah. Because to be honest, what are the incentives? It's not, okay, fine, I get free college. But guess what? College is expensive as fuck. It doesn't even, and I tell you from experience, the GI Bill will not cover a full time in college, period. You might get half to a court to 75% of it covered. That ain't, gonna, that ain't enough for me. Uh, you get fucking housing and three meals a day. Okay, fine. I can work a regular job and still do that. Figure. I don't know. Shit is a lot different than it was when these laws were written. Um, just like every other law, as far as like uh, like minimum wage and all that shit. Yeah, all that shit needs to be reexamined. Uh, Social Security needs to be reexamined. Because the boomers, they got all the fun. They wrote the they wrote the laws, and I again, I don't like tra- starting generational wars, but yeah. these are just facts. The boomers made the laws so that they benefited, and they fucking kicked the the fucking debt card down to us to or to future generations, because they just didn't give a fuck. They don't give they didn't give a fuck about the earth. They didn't give a fuck about the economy later on because they knew they were gonna be dead. Yeah, they just wanted what they could get at the time. And I don't know how this got that serious because this is a comedy podcast, but hey, yeah. this is just the type of shit to be on my mind, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, you got to check us out every Saturday around 6.30 p.m. It's live here on Twitch and anywhere you get your podcasts. That is Apple Music, Spotify, all that good stuff in 9 a.m. on Mondays for the visual on YouTube. Gotta I, check I us agree. Out. Epic. I, to be honest, look, this is going to be looked at, at a, depending on which side you're on and what, what, what fucking – tribe you play on i don't play on any tribes y- y'all know me most mm-hmm. people who watch this on a regular basis i don't fucking play sides i have my opinion and uh, for, uh but i've also looked at both sides and what I, I try to be objective about a lot of stuff i think in this country college should be free there are plenty of countries who are worse off than this country that have free college no, and I agree, dude. Education should be free. Um, yeah. I, 100%. There is not a bone in my body of disagreement with you at all. And that's because, not a political. That's just a humanitarian thing. Yeah, dude. Being a, a knowledge is power. And that's what they, they, they want. They, they, they want you to be dumb. They, 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 yeah. They, they, but it's for us, for, for Americans to be dumber is stupid because now we, guess what? We can't invent stuff. We can't be innovators like we have through all this time, although we. When it comes to rockets and sci- and space exploration, we stole fucking the knowledge from Nazi Germany. But yeah. that's near neither here nor there. Hey, we weren't <laughs> there, so it doesn't really matter right now. 
Let's just say Oppenheimer. If yeah, I saw yeah. that movie, you thought it was a great movie. Guess where they came from? Nazi Germany. Yep. Mm-hmm. Kaboom. Uh, <laughs> so, so sorry. I, uh, he was a fat phase on life. I mean, <laughs> just saying. Um, no, but it. Uh, you're right, man. You're 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 hitting the nail on the head. You must be drinking the thought juice. No, bro. This is RJ. This is the shit to be on my mind. I I just said it. That's a hundred percent. This is the shit that I be thinking. It goes through my head on a, on a daily, weekly basis. This is shit I think about. Because as much as I don't like fo- politics, I sometimes TikTok will force you through it. Like, yeah. Oh, you know, I do kind of want to know a little bit more about this. Of course, you got to vet who the shit comes from. Because I'll see some people start, bro. There'll be some videos that starts off like blah, blah, blah. And it's always some filtered ass chick. Like, I tell, I could. T- you can tell when somebody's got I need you. You should start a fucking. I, I need you to get a, a TikTok account. You want me to. Oh, God. Just dude. not to. Don't let it consume you. Just like observe something. Just stay on the For You page. I don't go to my friend's shit. I, I only stay on the For You page because I want to see all the different dynamics and stuff. And I try to limit what I like and what I don't like. Yeah. Because the more you interact with it, it's the more it'll send you that type of stuff. So I try to. Only fuck with, like, I, I want to keep this particular, I have two TikTok accounts. I want the Jared Lee comedy one to stay comedy. Yeah. But, yeah, of course, comedy, I still need to draw from politics and uh, hot topics and shit like that. Oh, by the way, that Michael, that uh, Matt Perry joke. <laughs> Matt Perry joke did pretty well. Oh, it did. It got, it got, uh, it got. Cause I I added in something else. Cause what did I said, what, what was the original? I said, um, Matthew, oh Matthew Perry. It sucks that Matthew Perry died because I was in the mood. I was not, I can't say I fucked it up too. Then I was. It sucks that Matthew Perry died because I was in the market to buy a new hot tub. Uh, uh. And then it was in between some other jokes, and I was like, I I just slipped that one in there. I I heard a joke today. Nigga, really? <laughs> well, I thought you were done. I'm sorry. I didn't know. No, no I wasn't I'm done. Sorry. I was still talking. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. God damn. Now I got to start the whole shit over no, again. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Okay, start it over. Fuck. Now I forgot where I was at. So anyway, it sucks that Matthew Perry died. Yeah. Because I was in the market for a new hot tub. Yeah. And he's still laughing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the I first just, time I heard it. I just thought I'd slip that one in there. Kind of like he slipped in. Yo, chill out, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, but but yeah, see, yeah. it got laughs. Yeah. <laughs> but then I heard a groan yeah. as I was going into my next joke, and I was like, did you motherfuckers just groan? Yeah. And I was like, fuck y'all. And yeah. then that whole, they fucking went crazy. I was like, oh, shit. I was like, this is where I, this is where I belong right here. No. Well, the joke Bunch I heard. Of, all my jokes fucking hit. I was going to say, I heard a joke earlier, and I thought it was hilarious. Um, it was like, why do uh, hospitals always have the AC on? Because they the- want to keep the bodies cold. That's well, they want keep- Well, no, it's because they want to keep the vegetables fresh. Same thing. The, uh, yeah, but it, it, it sounded funnier when I heard it, and I laughed hysterically because I was like, it's fucked up, but I was laughing. And it didn't work this Wait, time. Say it again. Say it again. It was basically, hey, why do hospitals always have the AC on? It's like, well, why? Like, why? It's to keep the vegetables fresh. And I just thought that was hilarious. I've heard that one. It's pretty good. Um, but that's all I got in terms of my, you know, my you ammunition. So. You should write so. Uh, I'll, I'll think about it. Which I'll joke, though? The, the uh, which joke you talking about? Um, the Matthew Perry one, or the vegetable one? I, I'm not gonna wait for him to fucking. Type. <laughs> <laughs> you want to tell everybody about our new guy here? Yeah. So we've got a new. Um, if you guys can zoom in with our lovely third camera, you could, you could also pick it up. And oh put it yeah, I guess I could. Yeah. So toward that one. So we've got, uh, this has been in my possession for a little while now. Um, here, this will l- look a lot better right there, but we have our first ever certified Avenger here on the table uh, in, uh, good old Sam Jackson, Nick Fury. Can very, I ask you, cool. can I ask you why we haven't? Nick Fury first. So somebody at work gave this to me. I don't know what it came off. Can I say a hot take real quick? Sure. Nick Fury is the worst Avenger of all. Well, I'm just saying he is, (laughs) but he is an Avenger nonetheless. Okay. Okay. So he is making his way to the table, or he's made his way to the table, and he is now a staple. You know what I saw today? Of the mad scientist life. 
Uh, there was a thing because uh, they were talking about the new uh, Daredevil Born Again is is taping now again, and um, I was somebody put it, oh no the the headline was like the Daredevil Born Again may have the most painful death in all the of the MCU coming up, and I was like, hold up, so we just gonna forget about Tony Stark? Yeah, I don't think it's gonna really get. More emotional than that, dude. I, exactly. And yeah. then, and I think people were being funny because I was like, so we're just going to skip over. I, I commented. Yeah. I was like, we're just going to skip over Tony Stark. And then people were like, Tony who? And so I think they were just adding to the joke. But yeah. Like, they had to agree with what I was saying because it's like, yeah, I don't, it can't go. It can't get more, much worse than that. Nah, nah. Oh, not a dry. He was the, he was the reason that the fucking MCU popped off. No, I know. That's what I'm saying. There wasn't a dry eye in the building. Uh, uh, not at all. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, they're just trying to market it, obviously, been to get people to view. I don't watch it. I thought you haven't watched Echo, have you? Uh, I have not. I have not. I was watching uh, American Nightmare on Netflix. Um, okay. It's, uh, is uh, that it's, the fucking Sofia Guevara shit? No, 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 no. That That is... Uh, Griselda. Yeah, that, that that's what you're thinking. That's new. This okay, is, so what is it, your shit? Uh, this was basically just a three episode mini series on this uh, couple that um, so it's it's like a crazy fucking story. It's like it's a true story it happened out in the Midwest. Um, this guy basically, you mean Wisconsin? Uh, you know it's crazy. I want to say it kind of is in that general area. I could be very <laughs> wrong. Um, but it's basically about this couple. This guy wakes up. In the morning, his his, his fiance was kidnapped, right? And these guys came into their home, drugged them, and they were in wetsuits, like like they were like it's it's just this crazy. I'm not gonna give it away, please don't. But it's because I'm about to hit you with with, with the go, keep going. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just this crazy ass true story about these people trying to figure out where this missing chick was. She reemerged, and she couldn't tell anybody where she was. You find out where she was, and you find out this just. It's got this crazy revelation at the end. It's just some wild shit. I get it. I don't care about this shit, though, dude. I knew that was coming. <laughs> uh, I knew that was coming. When you said, I got one for you, I already knew what it was. <laughs> I already knew what it was. You know me and true crime shit. Yeah, I know. You know what? The ladies that might be watching right now, I know, hey, go check it out. Yeah, no, RJ, RJ knows his sensitive side is so good that he knows all the best true crime shows. Not, no, not all of I them. I don't know any I, of them. I know some of them. Hey, you act like I sit down and watch I'm Lifetime. not. I don't know. Any of them. Dude, I'm trying to tell you, bro. I It was interesting. I know I just got sucked into it. It's just fucking, it's just a crazy-ass story. While we're on the, that kind of sim- similar theme, oh, Entertainment Beaker, I guess. Because, uh, uh, what, RJ? Because it's Container. Uh, of Entertainment. Yeah. That's, and that's exactly what it is. There you go. Cheers to Jared. Uh, I watched Echo. Uh, there's a lot of hate going on, and I... I can tell you a couple of reasons. I know why the haters, and you probably know why the haters too. Um, I think, as we talked about a few weeks ago, a lot of people think that there was this, uh, there has been this agenda style thing that Disney has been pushing. Yeah. Um, which I agree with. Uh, when it comes to this story, though, I don't really agree with it. I think this was uh, well put together. Uh, I think that it was representation of uh, several different groups that uh, hasn't really been recognized uh, in the past. Uh, and I thought it was very good. There's a lot of people who are saying, oh, the first couple of shows or oh, then after that. I, I can see where you're coming from because it started getting into the traditional side of they, if you know anything, okay, so Echo is basically, it's a Marvel story. She was already in, um, what was the first show she was in? Did you say she was oh, trained she, by Lex Luthor, right? Or not no. Lex Luthor, Kingpin. Kingpin. Yeah. Uh, fuck, what was it? What does, she was, Hawkeye. Mm-hmm. She was in Hawkeye. Did you watch Hawkeye? I've seen episodes of it. I haven't finished you it. You didn't finish it. Okay, yeah. so, well, you probably missed her then. So Echo was in Hawkeye, but then this show is all about, her. This is post Echo or okay. uh, post Hawkeye. Sorry, um, but it but it also tells you about her past and how she became Echo and all this other shit. Um, 
But anyway, it was a good. She's uh, even in the comic book. She's a Native American uh, woman. Um, she's deaf and she is an amputee. Even in the show, it tells you how she lost her leg and all this other stuff. Then she was already deaf when she was born. Um, so yeah, it's cool. Um, I liked it. I I thought the fight scenes were good. She fought Daredevil at one point. It was fucking getting down with him. Cause you know how Daredevil ain't no fucking joke. Like, no, no, he can no. fucking fight. Oh, I know the Charlie Cox version, which would this was the Charlie Cox version, and um, I don't know, man. I just thought it was a super good show, and I thought, and I, I for some reason, I've always kind of, I think maybe because somewhere along the line, I have Native American in the lineage, so I kind of identify with it. Because I don't really know that much about that side. Yeah. But um, I don't know. I, I, I just I felt a connection to it. And I, I, I just think people are doing it wrong. Matter of fact, the little girl who plays the younger her is her second cousin in real life. And, she's, and she's really deaf and an amputee in real life. Really? Uh, 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 Alaquia, Alaquia Cox is her name. That's pretty dope. I mean, think about that, dude. I mean, just growing up with that type of, you know, the, just with those Yeah, to get that opportunity. Uh, yeah, 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 I yeah. mean, I talk about it's an opportunity of a lifetime. Yeah, you, that, I really recommend you should watch it. I, yeah, think, no, I, I think you'll like it, to be honest. I um, mean, honest, honestly, dude, with the... Because you're a human. You're probably one of the more human friends that I have. Like, I mean that genuinely. Yeah, oh, thank you. I mean, I've it's you have I to think you would people. I think you would get it. Um... um no, well, I will say this. I know it's going to sound a little silly, but with uh, kind of football dwindling down uh, for the season, mm-hmm. um, it just because uh, it does kind of consume my Sundays because I'm obviously a big sports fan. Uh, but it'll give me more time to really get caught up on some some TV. And, oh yeah, and you're way that, behind. Buddy. Yeah, yeah. So I I will definitely check it out. I will definitely check. And it's it out. only what four or five episodes. It's easy. it's quick. It's quick yeah. and easy. It won't take you much time to get through it. Um, because I finally oh what if also you should watch what if, uh, probably first All and right. then watch that okay, uh, only because it kind of intertwines there. Yeah, I mean if it helps, it makes more sense to me. I'm all yeah, for yeah. it. Yeah, and 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 you didn't finish Hawkeye, so you, uh, they kind of rehash it a little bit, so you don't really need to watch Hawkeye. I'll do my uh, <clears throat> quote unquote due diligence and yeah uh, before I and there was kinda... something else about that. Oh oh um, so. The Golden Globes were while I was gone. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to talk about that as well a little bit because the, um, I think she got Best Actress for the Golden Globes, and she's nominated also for Best Actress for the Oscars. Was uh, I can't remember her name, and you haven't seen the movie, but Killers of the Flower, uh, Flowers, something, Moonflowers. Oh, have you seen that? Yeah, I've seen it. Is it good? I liked it. It's a Scorsese movie. Yeah. There's a lot that goes into that movie. Again, again, there's going to be haters on this because un- the unfortunate history of this country kind of, oh, matter of fact, uh, before I get, get, get back to that, I want to let everybody know, uh, Aquilia uh, Cox, the, the, the young lady who played um, Echo, she is also, um, from a reservation in Wisconsin. Oh. So she that's where she's really originally from. So like she's like legit Native American. Yeah, that's fucking sweet, dude. Uh, same thing with uh, the the lady who plays the wife of Leonardo DiCaprio in Killers of the Flower Moon. Is that that's Yeah, no, name. that sounds about right. I really want it actually. Why it looks good. Uh Bro, I told you the sh- I gave you my site. Yeah, you I know. You could have been watched it already. Um, but anyway, so I watched it. She did a very good job. And yeah, I think she deserved to win. I don't think there was any other movie that it And I think people were kind of upset. They're, yeah, you know what? I do want to get into this a little bit. So a lot of people were upset that uh what's the name? I didn't see Barbie. I couldn't get through it. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I tried to watch it. I couldn't get through it. Probably for whatever reasons. My Male biased, if you want. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, but I guess uh, what's this fucking guy's name that who played Ken? 
he's a famous actor. I can't remember his fucking name. Are you talking about in uh in Barbie? Oh, it's uh blah blah blah. I know who it is. I can, pff, we, I all, know, I, is we it, all know who is it, it is. Ryan it's Gosling. Good. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. So he got nominated for the the Oscar for best supporting male actor. Um, but Margot Robbie didn't get nominated for best actress or actor. Is it still a thing? You're supposed to call them actors now. Yeah, yeah. But there's still two categories in these fucking award shows. It's so stupid. Yeah. Bro, what are we doing? I don't know. Seriously. I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I ask questions. I got to call day. motherfuckers fucking Zazier Zim and fucking, I got to say, call this person an actor when they're fucking clearly a Triss. Yeah. Like, what are we doing? What are we doing here? What are you doing? Anyways. Here, are you watching us? If you are, thank you. Um. So Margot Robbie didn't get it. And people were all upset about that. Whatever. But, uh, I can't, you know, I need to look her name up. Because I cannot, I don't want to keep butchering her name. And she, she's very, she, she's very beautiful. And not going to, and I'm not going to lie. Um, Aquila, uh, I keep saying her name wrong too. Aquella Cox is also very cute. Oh boy. Here, let's. Uh, you never we, seen the Echo Chick? If I saw her, I would know her, yes. Oh my God, you suck. I get, how do I do a show with a person who doesn't know what I'm doing? You don't have anything to do. Fuck you, those fucking fuckers. What? Is that what I said? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, you motherfuckers, you. Killers of the flower. Flower moon. Yeah, there it is. Right there. there. Boom. Is. Um, oh, yeah. Look at Leo. <laughs> I, I need you to watch this because I, I, I want to reserve my thoughts about. Yeah, no, no. This is something that I would definitely But this watch. is also based on a true story, so I can't really. I don't want to give it away. No, no, no. Please don't. Please don't. But uh, if it's a Scorsese film, Bro, you have to. Wh- how do you? How have you not seen this yet? I just have it. That's all. Yeah, you got. You get up on it. Get up on it. Um, get up on it. Get up on it. Are we pulling up some images? Yeah. Uh, is Lil- that yeah, Lily Gladstone. That's her name. I have seen her before. Of course, you've seen her. You've seen her in the fucking trailer. Genius. What else has she played in? Nothing. Nothing? Well, I take that back. She's been in a, a few movies. The other, uh, Aquelia Cox has not been in any. That okay. was, uh, uh, Echo was her first thing. And so, like, her first, obviously, role. Period. Lead role. Lead role. Uh, she was in, like I said, she was in Hawkeye for a brief second or whatever. But anyway, so Lily Gladstone is has been nominated uh, for her role in Killers of the... Um, Flower Moon. It's a good movie. I liked it. I rather enjoyed it. Guess what? It is based on a true story. Um, <laughs> and I'll put the camera on me so no one gets offended. Yeah. Uh, white people, if you <laughs> feel some type of way about Native Americans, uh, you might not like this movie. Yeah, I. It, it brings the light out and some of the shit that some of y'all peoples did. Yeah, I mean, well, I, I wasn't there, so. You know. I didn't say you were there. Uh, I'm just. I let... said some people may get uncomfortable. That's all I'm saying. I'm not. T- don't, 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 don't put words in my mouth. Oh, hold on. I'm I saying wasn't. some people may feel uncomfortable about certain things. That's all I'm saying. All right. All right. So check it out, folks. And that's the whole point. That's why Marge Corsese did it. Because he felt, and De Niro did it. Because, and Leonardo, you got some of the best fucking actors and directors of all time showing you this was some fucked up shit. Yeah, no, and uh, I'm down to, uh, I don't want to say I'm down to see some fucked up shit, but I'm down for a good old Scorsese flick, I'll tell you that much. There's nothing that is ever going to turn me away from anything that man makes. That guy can make a movie about painting a house, and I'm sure I'll watch it. And I'm sure Hold it would up. be fascinating. Hold up. Hold just, up. I'm just saying. Spear chuckers. Oh, okay. Spear chuckers? I, I, all, did, oh. I, didn't, I didn't say that. Oh, shit. That's, <laughs> that <laughs> epic said that. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus Dude, Christ. Right, Jesus Christ is right. Jesus. Um, look, look. Anyone at the bar? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, what he says has nothing to do with the mad scientist lab or its host, me or RJ. Yeah, can you get the camera on me? Yeah, not me either. <laughs> Shout out to Epic, but we uh, the, the views of Epic are not the views of the Mad Scientist Lab podcast. Uh, sometimes they can be, though. And that's why we get along. 
That's why we get along so damn well. Sometimes they can be. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Feel good. Feels good. Feels great. Oh, oh. Uh, see, look, you w- he went to the reservation too. Did he? He said he's dating one. Oh, that's pretty dope. I mean, <laughs> look. Okay, so uh, these are jokes. These are jokes, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you got a hairball? These are jokes. Okay, so I have a theory because I've been, again, I've been watching a lot of this stuff, especially with the, the Killers of the Flower Moon and Echo, and I was thinking in my head, I was like, why are they all so pale skin? Yeah. Because remember back in the day, they used to like they used to be like, ooh, pale skin. Like, like that, that type of shit. Yeah. Every Native American I've met in the United States has been pretty pale skin. I I feel like I've met a good handful. Well, not I don't want to see it. I don't how know how many how many actual brown skins or quote unquote red skins. Um I would say five, like maybe. Really? Yeah, just a handful, dude. Like I, I know, like I, I want to say I, I knew a lot more when I was younger. As crazy as that sounds, yeah, uh, as opposed to like all white. Oh, okay. Um, I'm saying that because oh, 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 ooh, ooh. Yeah, I see why this film might be a little bothersome. <laughs> no, no, that's what I'm fucking trying to tell you. I think I get the joke now, if Jared. You, if you see the movie. They're having sex. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is that, and then there was this whole, it was, what do they call it? Um, basically, okay, so here's another one. There's another hot take. I'm going in right now. Um, you ever watch Star Trek? You know who the Borg are? Yeah, I do. The Borg are like, they, they go around to different, places and they uh assimilate people assimilate assimilate <laughs> what do they say resistance is futile oh yeah that sounds a little more like <laughs> where you know what? You know, it sounds exactly <laughs> like what i'm saying you, okay yeah. so what i've always done as a kid as i as i was growing up especially during tng uh the next generation for anybody who doesn't know i've always Watch the show and to f- try to figure out what cultures are comparable to those cultures on Earth. Like, where where the inspiration... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I got you. I got so you. the Klingons are the warriors, right? Yeah. What... If you, if, if you ever looked at Star Wars, like I watched it, I would say the Klingons are cl- close to, like, Genghis Khan or the Samurai. Yeah. Like, everything is about honor, um, fighting, and factions fighting each other that that's like samurai shit so that's the klingons yeah um the vulcans are about uh knowledge and getting like no emotion cuz they had emotion in the past so they've learned they're a race of people who learned from their mistakes in the past and now they're like all right we got to fucking chill out because if we don't shit can get bad yeah i haven't figured out what they are yet then you have the Borg. The Borg basically are colonizers. Yeah, yeah, I mean. They go from planet to planet, st- stealing their resources, creating whatever they want out of whatever's there, and making and assimilating each of those cultures into what they want, into who they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who does that sound like? I don't know, Jared. It sounds familiar, but can't really. Yeah, I can't put my hand on it either. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't know where it is. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know either. No, that's that's pretty Did funny. this get a little deep? It's a little too I deep. I really want to know. Uh, I wish I could see the. the uh, no, not just Americans. Because I'm an American. I am also an American. I'm an American. He's an American. It's not just Americans. So let's not do that. Yeah, let's not do that, folks. <clears throat> I, oh, here's another thought I had today. I'm on, on all this. I haven't getting, been able. <laughs> there, okay, I, look, you know what? I'll agree with that one. I'll give you Westerners. I will give you Westerners. That is 100% true. Um, So here's another thought I had. Yeah. I, was watch, I forgot what I was watching. And we were talking about uh, how you always 
bring up nostalgia and everything. Yeah, and yeah. A lot of people when they when they think about something, they always think about nostalgia. And I forgot what the actual connecting thought was, but what I came up with was nostalgia equals emotion. Logic is just what it is. Yeah, I mean, the the, the I forgot it what, is what it is kind of thing. No, no, something made me think about it because I, I was like, oh, these people are attaching nostalgia to this, which then I was like, oh, shit. They're attaching the emotion that they felt during the time that this came out, so this is why they feel so strongly about it. I guess it, this goes in back into tradition type shit too. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm just not rambling, but I just had to get that out there for everybody. All right, all right. Fuck you, RJ. Well, well, I'm just letting. I'm listening. I'm here to help you, Jared. I'm here to. I'm here to get the the the, the pot on the stove. You don't fucking watch mm. nothing. You don't fucking laugh at my jokes. What do you you mean don't laugh? listen to my jokes. You don't. Ha- I don't even know. Well, I do know one thing, folks. I know that you can catch us anywhere you get your podcasts. That is Apple Music, Spotify, all that good stuff. And you can catch us live, live, like right now, like as it's actually happening every Saturday around 6 p.m. here on Twitch. You might get the best. You might get the worst. You never know what's going to happen here. You never. But really Monday, know. what happens on Monday, RJ? Monday, you can start your week off the right way. You can start it off mad, just like most of us do already. Audio-wise or... Or visually on YouTube. Check us out. You're on your lunch break. Got nothing to watch? Check us out. We're pretty cool. We got stuff on a table. We've got decorations. We've got curtains. There's a you know a wall. It's good stuff. It's they good can't stuff. see all that. Maybe they can. Okay, oh, who knows? Who knows? But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to episode 218. Yes. 218 episodes of this here Mad Scientist Lab podcast. As always, it is I, RJ, the pizza guy, along with Jared, the visual mad scientist, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, thank you for everybody who joined us today. Um, and shout out to uh, Epic and all the lovely ladies at the bar and all the patrons who have been kind enough to check us out while they're getting their adult yeah. beverage on. Tip your servers and your bartenders. Um, it's very important. When I get up there, can I get a free drink? Yeah, please, please. We're, we're new. <laughs> we're, we're new. But don't worry. I'm sure we'll see you guys again soon. Until next week. Peace. Bye, everybody. Bye. Good that's evening. A, that's folks. some Simpsons shit right there. Hi, everybody. Er, but you so hard, huh? you yeah, won't yeah, see so nothing. So. Ever, 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 ever. <laughs>